deaths, John. A lot of people are opting to get some of these procedures done, but many folks might be a little bit worried about what will I look like once I get this procedure. Terry McCatton is the director of cosmetic and breast plastic surgery at WashU, here to show you about some new imaging in the operating room and some new breast implants just approved by the FDA. Good morning to you. Good morning. We're talking about first about this new 3D imaging, which shows some very realistic before and after shots of what people may look like after the procedure. How has this helped you in the operating room? Well, it's helped tremendously. So the images are extremely realistic. Uh, they're taken by six cameras that take a picture simultaneously. Um, the way that it's helped us is to communicate with our patients. Mm -hmm. Really, that's the biggest tool, an education and communication tool. Now, we're seeing the before and after, and I know it can be done on pretty much um, any part of the body, the nose. In fact, here is a great example of the nose, and we see real images of these people, the before and after on the left and the right. How realistic are these to the outcome? Correct. So the image on the left is a before, and the one on the right is a simulation of what they mm -hmm. may look like after surgery. So the image, the before, is extremely realistic. Um, the after is a way for us to communicate to the patient what we want to do for them surgically and to make sure that that's what they want. So I would say that the images are quite realistic, but obviously with any surgical procedure, the uh, computer is not 100% uh, right. accurate and people cannot, we cannot guarantee those results, but um, that gives a very good estimate. And have you seen doubters change their mind that, okay, after I see this, I'm gonna do it? Have you seen that? Yeah, I think not so much that they're doubters so much as they're uh, not sure how large of an implant they want, uh, how much of perhaps the nose they want taken mm -hmm. down or adjusted. So it allows us to communicate with them and just to make sure that we're on the same page when we communicate. And I think it's a lot better than basically guessing or trying to interpret what they're saying. Right, yeah. right. And you did mention implant. Just two weeks ago, the FDA approved a new implant called the 410, and it is different than what we're normally seeing or hearing about. I'm holding two of them right here, if we can maybe show on the camera. So those are the old ones. These there. are the old yeah. ones. This is the old silicone. This is the old saline. And you're holding the new ones that are, in yeah. fact, I felt one, yeah. and it's kind of like that memory foam. It is very much. So, so the big difference with these implants, one is that they're shaped. Another one, as you can see, I can hold it here, and the uh, top of the implant doesn't ripple or collapse. Mm -hmm. The old implants that you have in your hands, mm -hmm. they'll tend to collapse um, when placed in the pocket. So essentially, these implants provide more uh, upper pull contour to a breast and has fewer ripples, which has been an issue with previous types of breast implants. And what are the risks of this? Uh, just the same as any other uh, surgical procedure? Yeah, so, so the new implants have essentially the same risk profile as the old ones. Mm -hmm. However, there may be some improvements. We find uh, in studies that they leak less frequently, they form scar tissue less frequently, and they probably last longer as well. Hmm, some amazing new technology and newly approved uh, devices from the FDA. So thank you very much for your expertise, Dr. Terry McCatton from WashU. And if you'd like to learn more about information about procedures, plastic surgeries, things like that, we've got a link to the doctor's website on our website at fox2now.com. Thank you, doctor. We thank you very much. It. I appreciate it. All right, Glenn.